So self-care for me as a single mom and what that means to me. So when I first became a single mom, it was a survival mode type of transition where now I had a baby who couldn't be left alone. So that meant not showering alone, keeping the baby in the room with me while I showered. Um, and as well as some other routines that, you know, babies can't be left alone. So I had very, very little time to myself. And it required a lot of um, time management skills for me to transition into this new life of being a mom and how now I have to plan out and create time in my day to care for myself. And self-care isn't about, um, you know, paying for my son's toys and, you know, um, spending time with my friends in the afternoon, going for drinks with friends, that kind of thing. It's completely about me. It is self-care. It is the care for self. So that means I will, you know, budget out um, in my monthly budgeting for things that I want that provide me with self-care. It means, um, you know, if, if I don't want to do that, it means literally just creating time in my day where I am completely alone and I can reflect on my life or reflect on myself and just <laughs> care for myself, whether that be meditating, um, doing yoga, stuff like that is what self-care means to me personally. So I think that anyone, whether you're a parent or not, can be extremely busy um, depending on the lifestyle you choose. Um, so, I, but I became more busy after I had M. And so that meant in the morning, waking up to an infant, hitting me on the head with one of his toys, to all of a sudden running around all day doing stuff, um, whether that be work and then have to do this before I do this, <laughs> just kind of, the day gets a hold of you. And so I remember for the longest time um, going on, you know, I think it was like two and a half years of just running around like crazy until I finally got down a good method where either I became super used to being really busy and it doesn't phase me anymore, but really I think it's um, me just learning how to um, manage my time better so that I do have time in the day for not just self-care, but, but also to make sure that I get done everything that needs to get done, whether that be that day or that week or whatever. So I want to share with you my perspective on self-care and the acts of self-care and why it's super crucial. So gifting yourself time throughout every single day is you subconsciously or consciously reminding yourself that you're important. So many times you'll hear people say, you know, you should spend time with your children other than, you know, cleaning and cooking for them. And you should spend time with your partner to remind them how important they are to you. Um, it's the same thing with yourself. You have to spend time with yourself to remind yourself that you're important, not just your friends and not just your relationships with others, but only for yourself. I think that when people are so busy and they spend, you know, there's nothing wrong. Obviously it's healthy to have a lot of friends and to spend a lot of time with them. Um, but if you spend too much time with other people, where do you find yourself? Like where can you sit down and become grounded again and reflect on your life or reflect on, just, just reflect by yourself? When do you have time for that? So, you have to create time. And so that's that's the goal, that's the idea. So everyone's schedule is very different, um, obviously. And so not everyone wants to wake up at 4 a.m. And not everyone, you know, wants to stay up all night. So creating time in the day might mean um, taking out blocks of certain things that you do and placing them somewhere else in the week. It could also mean you know, maybe um, don't spend so much time on your phone. And that might feel nice, and that might be, you know, maybe a way that you 
provide yourself with self-care, but I, it's kind of a distraction, right? Like when you're on your phone, you are communicating still with other people. And so I would say, well, what I do is I really have a specific time in the day um, to be on my phone and to do social media. And so really I'll take out pieces of my day to meditate and to wake up at a certain time. I always tell people and especially parents, um, it's ideal to wake up at least a half hour before the rest of the house does. This way you can prep your day by yourself and just kind of collect yourself before the craziness starts. Um, I like to wake up at least like three hours before my son wakes up, um, but that's just a perf personal um, preference. Usually I'll do um, like yoga in the morning and um, like read and stuff, but I always like to drink my coffee and read just super early in the morning. It's just something I like to do. And that's an act of self-care. And I do that every single morning, right when I wake up. So it's extremely personalized um, what each person likes to do. Like not everyone is a meditation freak like myself. Not everyone um, likes to even do exercise. So um, I've known people to like women, you know, like I've known women to get their nails done um, on their lunch breaks and um, maybe go to a cafe in the morning uh, before work and sit and drink coffee and just reflect and look out on others. Um, as long as you're spending time alone and to yourself, um, even like a good option would be taking a bath, even for like 20 minutes. Um, you don't need to spend hours um, providing yourself with this self-love and self-care. You can split it up throughout the day, but as long as it's consistently happen happening every single day, I think that's crucial to um, anyone's daily routine because you have to live your own life too. You have to be happy for yourself too. And it really starts with, yes, with getting, you know, like more money and um, making sure that everyone in your life, like your children are satisfied and stuff. But also we cannot um, provide the love and care properly to others in our life unless we come from a position of strength. And we cannot be strong if we do not love and care ourselves first. And I see the difference in my mood. So not only am I just generally calmer throughout the day, but if I don't do these things, if sometimes I'll just skip over meditating or um, not exercise in the morning, I will, and they, those days do happen, I will see by the end of the day, me in just like a different mood. I'll just be different and I'll ask myself that night, I'm like, why am I so cranky or why can I not handle things like this? And then I'll re remember, oh, you didn't do this this morning. Oh, you didn't stay within your routine. And I don't put myself down um, for missing days like that. I'm not as harsh on myself um, as say like I used to be with stuff like that, but I will see a huge difference in my mood and just how I am. And also how I manage things too. Like my mind is much more clearer when I do um, do things for myself. So where in your day, every day, can you, even if it's not at the same time, um, because every day is different, even on the weekends, where can you take out a half hour either in the morning or in the afternoon, just to start off with a half hour minimum to do something for yourself completely by yourself for just one half hour. And then I would say once you have that half hour down, you will see a difference. You will already start feeling kind of happier and better about yourself for either reading that book you've always meant to grab or um, even if it's like watching a TV show for, you know, even though that's considered unhealthy, I would say, well, I mean, is it for yourself? Like, do you enjoy it? Um, yeah, I would say start off with that and then you'll probably start adding on because you'll want more. You'll want more pieces throughout the day, like in the evening, maybe, you know, 20 minutes and stuff like that. So that's how I um, started out my journey of every single day, providing myself with acts of self-love and self-care. Thank you.